and welcome back to another episode of Expressions of Podcasts. We're on season two, episode 18, and I'm super excited because uh, we have a special guest today with us, uh, Lisa Schwartz. Uh, she's an actress, a YouTuber, slash content creator. Um, she's done quite a bit of different things, uh, like write this book, uh, which I have in my hands. Um, and uh, she's recently got into interior design and interior decorating, which is really cool. Um, but before we get into everything, I just wanted to say hi to a couple of my co-hosts here. So uh, Brian, how are you doing tonight? I am excellent. I'm very excited to talk to you, Lisa. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on our podcast. Oh, of course. I'm honored and it's a pleasure. We've been trying to do this for a while now. So this better be awesome. Well, we better do a good oh, job. I know. <laughs> no, no pressure. No pressure. Yeah, I'll, I'll drop it oh, now yeah. then. That's, I'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're not going to be awesome, Mark. How are we going to be awesome without you? That's a good point. <laughs> Um, so Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm feeling a little self-conscious now, though, that now that Lisa says she's into interior decorating, please ignore this. Mark, <laughs> I was going to say, like, your background is killing it. I should have, like, done a better background. Mark, I'm very interested and want a tour of everything back there. I'm just thinking it's, like, a lot of <laughs> a lot going on, you know. You got this <laughs> style. It's called maximalism. You got it oh, down. It? Perfect. Yeah. It's like an old Iron Maiden album cover. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there is a picture of my dad, right? right there so that's uh, cool. yeah that's cool that's great <laughs> awesome awesome and ryan how are you doing tonight i'm not doing bad i uh i don't have quite the setup that mark's got going on back there but i do have my beautiful arcade cabinet so i'm happy about that <laughs> uh, but no, other than that everything's, everything's good i can't complain good good um and lisa how are you doing today i feel like i failed on my background i should, should I take you guys great. on a tour of the house and find a better house? <laughs> that, that really depends. Uh, what we Because it's so far away, we can't really tell what kind of plant that is behind okay. you. Okay. Yeah. That's good because this is the one fake plant that okay. I have in my house. I feel a little ashamed that I have, but it's a dark corner. I just... You know, don't tell anyone except for yeah. everyone that's listening. <laughs> you didn't even have to tell us, to be four, honest. Four or five people. <laughs> I have this problem where I overshare, which works for my career, but sometimes <laughs> is my downfall. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, so, uh, Lisa, for uh, our listeners and our viewers, um, could you describe a little bit about yourself, what it is you do, and kind of how you got into it? Uh, sure. I, oh God, it's such a deep question sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I'm a therapy. Where do I begin? Um, so I grew up in Los Angeles. I had always been interested in theater. I did theater growing up. It was just sort of like, I was a performer from a very young age. I went to college at UC Irvine, wearing a shirt today to represent. Um, I studied theater there. And then after that, I moved back to LA and was like, I'm doing this. I'm going to be an actress. Let's go. I started auditioning and I auditioned for a Comedy Central pilot and I booked it and the pilot never went, but the creators of the pilot introduced me to YouTube. And at the time, YouTube was really, I mean, that was like 12 years ago, I think 12 or 13 years ago, YouTube was just sort of on the scene. It was just starting and it wasn't like a place for careers or the, the term influencer was not a thing. YouTuber was not even a thing. It was just like cat videos and, you know, like comedy nerds making sketches. And so I kind of got in with a bunch of comedy nerds making sketches and um, eventually started my own channel and figured out how to do that. And then it just kind of grew into a career that I had no intention of having, but it just kind of happened. I was lucky I got in early, but it was an outlet for me to be creative and do the performance and the things that I wanted to do ever since I was a little kid. And it just kind of transformed into this life that I sincerely had no intention of having, but here we are. And then I recently wrote a book about my experiences of being um, single in my 30s and uh, what that feels like and hence the book. And yeah, so I mean, it's just my life has gone on this weird trajectory that I could have never expected, but I'm so grateful for the opportunities and YouTube has continued to provide for me. So uh, here we are. That's me. That's, awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. That yeah. is so cool, actually. If I can just say, um, 
one of the things that you said earlier already was you don't really know how to say what you do. And it's so true as a creator who has to make their living from creating, it opens up so many different opportunities to diversify and try different things to be with a group of a group of uh, comedy geeks, as you say, uh, that's got to be the most freeing thing. And that's got to be great training for any kind of career in front of a camera, whether it's YouTube or in film or like your TV series, party girl that you did and all the other things it, you have to be so, so diverse with being able to do different things. Is that something you've always done since birth? What we've noticed talking to a lot of creators is you can't hold a creator down. Like right from yeah. out of the womb, they're, they're thinking of doing things. They're, they're planning this. They're, their passions are already instilled at birth. Did you find that acting and so on was that for you? That is so interesting. Um, thank you for like, now I'm going to talk about that in therapy because that is really like... <laughs> That's like such a deep question that I haven't really like explored and examined, but I think you're right. Like I was, a, I was super imaginative as a child. I could play in my room for hours and go on like, I still have like distinct memories, like go on really crazy adventures that obviously weren't happening, but they were all in my head. And I was always like, what can we do next? What can we make next? I would make my friends come over and audition for me. Like it was always just like, we have to put on a show or we have to mm -hmm. like, even in like elementary school, when we would do class projects, it wasn't for me, it was like, we're putting on a show. We're putting on a performance. I always went like the extra step, but I never thought about that or connected that until this, until you mentioned that. So yeah, that's beautiful. I guess, I guess it's true. <laughs> And when, when you can encapsulate all those things, all those things that influenced you growing up and take all those things that you love to do and turn that into a career, that's literally why we do this podcast is talking to people who've, who've managed to uh, do what they love every day yeah. and get paid for it. So to find out how people are able to transition from the dreams and the, the, you know, the wants and desires to do these creative things into making them your career. I think that's really valuable information for a lot of people to listen to and, and learn from. Uh, it's not easy. So it is for somebody not like yourself easy. who's been successful at it for now 15 years, congratulations, by the way, on your 15 years on YouTube. That's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. It's, it's definitely something that a lot of people could learn from. Yeah. But I think you're right. You hit, you hit it on the head with, um, it ebbs and flows, right? We we didn't sign up for careers that are, you know, nine to five, that you climb the ladder, that you get the salary. Like, it's not that. <laughs> and it will never be that. And I have some friends who are successful TV movie stars, and they still worry and have moments of, like, complete panic as to what their next project is going to be. So it, it's a blessing that we've chosen this because it fills us, our soul in a whole different, like, level that I think a lot of people tap into and have the opportunity to do. But at the same time, yeah, whoa, it is sometimes very scary and sometimes very taxing. And I have certainly looked for many other jobs and then pulled back at the last moment. But uh, I look at those job postings sometimes just to see if there's something else I could do. But it never, <laughs> it never, it doesn't work you know it you should work, work at a camera store it really works well for a <laughs> oh, there we go. You know? <laughs> that's brilliant but you all are smarter than me i couldn't do that i'd be like i don't know you should see my camera looks like. <laughs> i have to say though like kudos to you and, and uh creators your, yourself and, and other creators that do that um and thank you for sort of burying that piece of it that you know what is my next project and you have that that moment of anxiety or worry of you know what is my next project um, which is why I do what I do, where, as you say, you get the salary. And I mean, I know I've got a paycheck coming in in two weeks. There'll be another paycheck coming behind it. Um, that's why I never became a rock star, uh, which was my original childhood dream. Um, that and the fact that I realized that you had to practice and put your soul <laughs> and everything into it. It wasn't easy, you know, so. Um, but it's why I don't do that. It's why I'm not a creative full time. Uh, I'm a photographer as well, but it's not something that I care to pursue as a career because I would worry too much about where that next payment is coming from and how am I going to make the car payment this month? Uh, because I didn't get that project I was hoping to get. So uh, that would probably just crush me if I if I was uh, 
trying to do that. So thank you to you and all of the other creators that uh, that do that and sort of ride that wave and, and jump from one to another to, to make content for us. Yeah, oh, that's nice. But also I think that there's like knowledge in your ability to be like, that's not what I want. And like, I, so I choose to do this, but you still like have it as a hobby. I think there's a lot of power in that because I think a lot of uh, creators specifically, because I went to acting school. So, you know, I've been watching the journey of a lot of uh, people that I've graduated with. And I would say like very few of us are still kind of going at it. And a lot of people have like, you know, changed careers and stuff. But I think the, the place that's the hardest is the in-between when you don't make the decision one way or another and like so I think like the power of you being like hey that's not like gonna work for my psyche like that's not the stress that I want um is a beautiful thing and a powerful thing and I hope that you like feel confident in that um and that you're still be able to like you know do your craft and your photography but you set your own boundaries and I think in in any field it's like being certain about something one way or another is a huge, powerful thing for what that's Or just for. knowing yourself. Knowing, knowing yourself. what you can and can yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm, Otherwise, I'm, you could drive yourself mad. Yeah. I'm kind of curious myself because on that same point, obviously, you're not somebody who would just make content that you're uncomfortable with or wouldn't want to release just to, to sell out, for lack of better words. But I also find on YouTube especially, there's a lot of people just doing the same thing, whether it's fake. It's a lot of just fake content, I find, because it's getting views. How much does that annoy you? Do you pay attention to that? Or are you just more focused on what you're doing, knowing that it's working? Um, gosh, that's an interesting question. And I'm with you on a lot of that. And like, but I also would be lying if I said I like haven't fallen into that trap over the last 12 years. I mean, I think trends like... Uh, change like when i first started it was sketches and that felt very like organic to me but then there was like a lot of vlogging and then a lot of like challenges and like i definitely had moments in my career where i was doing stuff that was like just to get the views like i knew that this was popular and so i was doing it i mean it's it's still a business ultimately right like you still have to do the thing to continue mm -hmm. the thing but I will say it did not bring me joy. Um, and so I try now to be as authentic and do stuff that I like eat, feel proud of. Or even if I don't feel proud, like super like we don't need everyone to see this video. It's like my core group of people that watch, like, well, I know they'll still enjoy it. And I feel like I'm Well, you did it for you. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a hard thing to do. Right? And like it, it certainly like. You're playing against an algorithm. You're playing against like views and, and clickbait. And like, there's so many, like in YouTube, there's so many factors with it. So you really just have to kind of like decide, I don't know. So I kind of taken some hits and definitely am not as popular as I have been or could be, but I mean, I, at what cost, which then goes back mm -hmm. to what we've been talking about, about like what actually makes you happy. So uh, right. I don't know if I answered your question. I feel like I went in circles and word vomited, but no, I think I think you did. No, that's because, like I said, one of those. It's a really interesting thing when you think about it, because at some point in YouTube, like you said, you you had to make certain content just to get big. But nowadays, I just I also find that a lot of it is so faked that you can tell that it's not even just trendy. Like I understand trends because yeah. everybody has to follow trends. That's obviously going to get you views, but then it gets to a point where it's just straight up faked videos where you know that you're only tricking the majority of people that are going to fall for it it's it's a weird thing i guess like beyond clickbait like beyond the title you mean like the actual videos are just like fake just completely oh, wow. fake. yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah we're like you know fake prank videos things like that where you're like well this has just been completely bad like you can tell it's actors you can tell the entire setup but then you go and read the comments and go these are people that are you know it's all over the world who are just able to fall for because they don't know any better, right? So, right. Sorry, I uh, sorry to cut you yeah, off. I we're actually having some audio issues. I, I don't think any of us can hear you properly. Oh, Looks can like you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. perfect. Oh, that was weird. Um, I was gonna say, like, the majority of like the bulk of where we got paid now it's it changes and it has changed but it's through brand deals 
And uh, that's the thing that like really upsets me is that people like I get it like you have to make your money but I try my best to be very like specific about what brands I'm promoting and like I you know it's hard to say no to money especially now it's a tough time but like I really try and like that's the stuff that pisses me off from what I do because I do more like lifestyle stuff so pranks that I, that would drive me nuts if I was like in that field but like for me it's like people that promote stuff that either it's so obvious that they don't actually use it or they don't stand by it or they didn't do their research on it. Like there's some impressionable people out there and your response, that's why we're called influencers. Now we're influencing people like that kind of stuff actually drives me nuts. Um, and that's where I, I can feel like, that. yeah, I can respect you know? that a lot. I think that's where the human business. condition comes in. Yeah, yeah. And that's where the human condition comes in. I mean, there's some people who have the moral and the ethics and the moral code to, to just, steer that path you know in the middle and then you have some people who are just like you know what this is just for the money i need the i need the paycheck and and they do what they have to um i was on a podcast where the the person was so concerned with algorithm that you weren't allowed to say the word pandemic oh. and literally somebody just said well yeah when when the pandemic hit i had to switch my careers and try something different and that's all that was said and all of a sudden in the comments it's like pandemic don't say pandemic and i'm like did i say it like i didn't even hear it it happened so quickly and this is obviously somebody who's more concerned with the numbers than with being a creator and that kind of really showed me a different side of of um, the business of youtube but at the same time you're doing what you love i mean i've watched your videos you're you're yourself you are just yourself talking about your day and going over things that are important to you. And, and I think that's important because as you said yourself, you've got your core group of people after 15 years, you have people that have been following you for a really long time and they look for your videos to find out what's up and what you've been doing and check out your fashion um, things that you're doing. And, and of course with the designing and so on. Um, so it's a completely different thing, what you're up to and what some of these other people are up to. I mean, there's a reason we've invited you on and not this other person. <laughs> you know, because we want to talk about the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually made a conscious decision. Are we are we concerned about the algorithm or are we not concerned about the algorithm? And on the show like this, we're not concerned about it. We just want to have <clears throat> good conversation and good stories and find out important things, right? So, yeah. uh, and and help our mental health. That's why we do it. So, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny about the pandemic word because. I had heard watching other people's videos when this all first started that like YouTube was like flagging videos that were using that word and which is absurd. Like really, I, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. But no one can verify these things because there is nobody you can like just call, right? Like there's no like 1-800 YouTube. Like it just, you, <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. Even if you have a contact there, it's, it's, <clears throat> You know, so it's all like word of mouth, honestly. So I have been avoiding it, but I started putting it back in because it's like, how can we like, we can't not talk about what's happening. This is, this it's is the real world. Yeah, It is the world. Like, you know, and it's, it's done such a number on all of us. So, I mean, it would be a disservice to not talk about it. So I started using it and so far it's been okay, but I definitely question it every time I say the word. Especially after so long of not being allowed to say it. I mean, you think, is it going to hurt me? Is it going to hurt me? I mean, it's your business. You have to be aware of it for sure. Yeah. Is it going to hurt us right now? Is this going to hurt this episode? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah it's it's, really it's going to kill our viewers. I, I, I got to say, though, like we've talked about it almost every episode because uh, we started this podcast in the pandemic. Mm. And one of our main oh. questions that we ask people is like, uh, how did the pandemic affect your creativity and your field? Um, and what you're working on. Um, and I'd love to know that from you, Lisa, like how, how did the pandemic impact you? I mean, <laughs> it was, it was just a trying time, like all around. So definitely just like, uh, aside from work stuff, it was just str obviously very stressful. Um, mm -hmm. and dealing with everyone's like emotions, like there's just a lot going on, but you know, but in terms of work, I was lucky because, uh, I was lucky in some ways and not so lucky in some ways. When the pandemic hit, that's when cancel culture really like went nuts. Um, and it became really difficult. <laughs> it became really difficult because 
people had nothing else to do and um, were just at their computers at all time as, as we all were, right? Like my whole social life was in my phone with my friends and like, you know, that's just like, that's how we all kind of survived, I think. And it was a blessing in that way. Um, but it made um, the space of YouTube and just uh, social media in general really volatile in some ways really good because a lot of good work needed to be done and um, conversations needed to be had on like a, you know, global level. Um, but in a lot of ways, it really affected the work we were doing because we couldn't do anything and we were scared to do anything um, because we were being monitored so closely and being sh like, uh, this is the first time I've talked about this publicly, you know, like wow. I, it was just, it was really just a scary, it was a scary time for creators because um, the landscape changed like so drastically and so quickly and we were forced to look at like choices and things that we did in the past, which again, positive, great, necessary. Uh, but it made moving forward really difficult because none of us, I, I should speak for myself because I, it, I, I felt like I was alone to be honest. Um, Cause I've always kind of just been in my own little corner, but I felt like I didn't know how to navigate this like new, really like, um, heavily moderated world. And so I took a break for a little bit because I needed to kind of like wrap my head around that and look at my old videos and make, you know, like we made choices that we weren't proud of, but you know, like nothing for me and nothing's like super extreme, but like, it was definitely a time that was challenging. So, um, in that way it was challenging in the positive way. It was a place for expression um, and it placed to connect with people who really needed to connect. Like they're my community. I feel so grateful for is so lovely and people that just needed a place to be and feel comfortable and an escape from the reality that was around us. So, uh, when I came back and started making videos that felt really authentic and that I was proud of and felt like it was a version of me that I was happy to share and it was a current version of me, um, it felt like such a relief that it was like, we all had somewhere to come and be. Um, and I could still do my work even though I couldn't leave the house kind of thing. So I don't know, that was a very like existential long version uh, or answer to that question. But it was, uh, I don't know if you guys talked to any other creators that have experienced that, but it was a weird time. People were angry, people were really angry. Well and what's frustrating the most, I think, about that is when, when you consider cancel culture, what's unfair to, especially when you describe that story, is cancel culture is the first to essentially cancel people for past mistakes as opposed to helping people learn and grow from those mistakes. And Absolutely. I think that's the biggest issue we have with, with our society right now is we're so quick to say, nope, that person shouldn't have any say or any future or any, any stake in what goes on now because of something they did in the past. And I think... There's just something wrong about that. There needs to be accountability to an extent, but also a chance to learn and grow from those mistakes and, and to make up for those mistakes, right? So I don't think it's fair to creators of any state to have to look back on what essentially was them just expressing themselves. Like it would be unfair yeah. to us to have to look back on our episodes and think that we had to, to censor ourselves for anything, or at least not have a chance to learn from what we might've done wrong. And the same Every goes time for I hear any sort of creator. Yeah, every time this conversation comes up for me, I think of Eddie Murphy. Mm. I mean, if anybody's ever seen Raw or Delirious, you can't say any of that stuff today. You can't. Oh, no. And yet then I was rolling off my chair. I mean, it was yeah. shocking and crazy and funny and all these things that made him famous. And yeah, I mean, cancel culture has definitely changed the world. But it's also changed how we deal with the stresses. Like we've had another guest on our show um, who generated I, don't, I can't gen say generated there was a lot of feedback a lot of negative feedback on our episode because we had this gentleman on and you know because of that he didn't want to come on the second time we've asked him to come on and you know that it wasn't just on our show i mean this is what he deals with every day right through his his channel and for stupid reasons like really stupid he was a great guy and we love ken domic we love ken um so there's no issue there but uh, he felt really bad and the public makes you feel this way for doing what you have to do to make a business in this medium. Um, obviously, you've dealt with a lot of this as well um, before even COVID. 
Uh, I don't know if, if you want to get into it much, but there was a video you made back in the day, uh, Taylor Swift, uh, Shake It Off. Ah, and, I love uh, that video. It was great. I watched it five times in a row. I just think it's hilarious. And it's so relevant. And all the things, you, you kind of play back the things that people say to you in, in comments, and you made it into a video about shaking it all off. And I thought it was amazing. Um, did, did that help you prepare for haters now? You know, having to get that out of your system and making that whole video. I mean, the process of making the video had to be kind of cathartic in a way, you know, like getting it all out and so on. But did that actually help you prepare for what you're going through with uh, just the jerks in the world today? I mean, I think just, well, thank you. I love that video. And I, uh, it's, I took it down for several reasons. Um, but I um, love that video, especially because my grandma, my grandma is in that. Oh, um, that's so funny. Yeah, I make my grandma, I used to make my grandma do all this crazy stuff, which is so sad. Like I had to take it down because people were like offended that I like gra grabbed my grandma's boobs. It's like, oh my God, this was the highlight of my grandma's life. Like, <laughs> 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 they have no idea. They can't, they can't be the ones to judge that. No, if you're yeah. too much offended, then you have every right to keep that video online. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah oh she, i mean she was like thought she was famous it was great um <laughs> no i think just like years of doing this like kind of you start to like gain a little extra skin <laughs> or, or like hard skin hard skin is that a, ew is that a thing? <laughs> um yes um but it's still her i mean i really like I really am telling you, like, the community that I have built, I hope the, they're listening right now, have, are, in the recent years, are just, like, the loveliest of people. Once in a while, I'll get a not nice comment. Um, and I just, I think you just got to, like, reality check, like, who you are in real life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, no, I feel, I have done a lot of work in so many different aspects of my life and with therapy and, like, I really work to be a kind, good person. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But, like, I feel proud of who I am. And mm. my friends reflect that. My family reflects that. My husband reflects that. So I, I, it's just like a, you got to just check yourself and not fall into, like, this kid in middle of who knows where is just spouting off the meanest things at you. Uh, one bad comment can really throw your day off, but you really got to just step back and look at what's really the truth Good. here. Well, it's a, it's a hard thing, the best way to look at yeah. it. Best way to look at Absolutely. it. Like, I don't well, think I've ever difficult... heard that. Like, that's awesome. Uh, easier said than done. I mean, it depends on the day. Oh, I'm, I don't deny that, but yeah, no, I love that. I'm sure you guys know whenever you get a negative comment, it's so hard. It's You can obsess about it, but like, what is that? You know the truth. Yeah, but we're human. People. Yeah. It still sinks in. It still sinks we're, in. Where I, I do disagree at, at one point, though. You said, you said you're not perfect, and you are perfectly you. No, and that's the thing, yeah. right? We're, we're all, um, like, I'm, I'm, you know, as far as imperfect as I am, I'm perfectly me, you're perfectly you. And, and you're the person that you are. And I think it's, like, funny, weird, not funny, haha, -ha, but funny, weird that you know, there is so much stock taken into somebody got offended by something. Like you say, you know, you, you grabbed your grandma's boob and it was like, people are like, oh my God. And and, it, and there's sort of like, why did you get offended by that? It wasn't you that got grabbed. And obviously she was an, an actress of some sort in the video. She was a player in the video. It's a skit. It's fun. I, I watched it just before the show. It's it's a it's a lot of fun to, to watch and, and see. And uh, I mean, really well done production and all, all that stuff. But um, to get offended by an action like that, um, like my, my wife is just watching, I think it's four on the floor or kids in the hall. She's watching all the old, the old episodes of it yeah. right now. And some of the stuff uh, we're, we're dying laughing, splitting the gut. And I'm like, you could not put this on TV right now. Like oh I'm surprised. I think she's watching it on Amazon prime or Netflix or something, but it's how, how it's there. I don't know because <laughs> so many totally. So many companies put so much stock in, oh, it might offend somebody. Who cares? <laughs> well, that's the, the problem. That's the other issue, I think, with cancel culture is how selective it can be. You know, yeah. it's there's no, like, they, they have clearly decided what they're going to cancel people over.
but there's so much of it out there. They're like, well, we're going to cancel this for now and we'll get to this later, maybe, you know? So that's why it, it puts everybody on edge and it scares people because you've got all these creators who now have to look back at their content and go, yeah. are they going to come for me at some point? Am I going to get to a point where I'm so successful that now, like, I can't get to that level now. Like, I'm afraid to yeah. because if I do, then all of a sudden, because of this one stupid joke that I made back in 2006 or whatever, you know, it's, that's something that uh, I really, I do sympathize with. Yeah. Although to be fair, like, see, then it gets mixed up because there are some people that like have done terrible, like should go, should like illegal things. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like oh, yeah. Yeah. It, the problem a, is it, a line. <laughs> but yeah, but the problem is there sometimes isn't a line and that's where like, it's complicated. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Well, I, I don't you know. said it best in one of your own videos. It's about your intentions. Yeah. You know, your intentions are coming from a good place. You know that's true. So yeah. you can just keep on keeping on with these good intentions and have some good sense not to you know push it too far, I guess, in some cases. But that's not really your bag anyway. I mean, you, yeah. you're not out there trying to push any you know, craziness out there. You're just having – you're just doing you. No, but that was like the thing. Like I grew up on like – you guys like I grew up with like Dumb and Dumber and Austin Powers and like all these things that were like they were pushing it like they like again I'm sure if we went back and watched them we'd be like oh my god <laughs> you can't do that and say that but like that's what we knew and like that's what was popular back then so yeah I think there there needs to be a little grace and leeway with that and as long as people like you can clearly see that people are growing and learning and 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 moving forward and haven't done anything illegal then like by all means man come on we yeah, all no, yeah. you nailed it right there is that it's there needs to be a little bit of grace like you take the illegal stuff completely out of it 100 percent, no yeah. need for anything illegal i think it's amazing that we've seen equality and and trying to el eliminate racism come to the point that it's at and i want to see that continue to grow in Absolutely. every way that it can like Absolutely. one million percent that is amazing but I also think there needs to be some grace for, like you had said, you look at Dumb and Dumber, the amount of sexist jokes, little things that, you know, like I'm sure in my past I've said some stupid things that I look oh, back yes, on. Oh, yes, you have. I, I remember this one time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one, one, time one time at band camp, you know, but like even that, that in and of itself could be considered sexist joke back in the day, right, when you're doing the, the band camp joke. So I think there definitely needs to be some sort of a grace and some sort of a chance to understand and forgive if we want to push forward with this equality and push forward with trying to understand people as humans, right? We all yeah. want to live in a peaceful world. We all want to get along. And I think that's the, at the end of the day, the main goal. Yeah. I mean, let's hope. And like, I guess that's why I just hoping to like continue to like spread love and like, it sounds so cheesy, but like, I just want people to like feel empowered and kind and good and mm -hmm. 100%. Trying, to, trying to do my little part, but no one, that's and, a really big mm -hmm. gift that you have, though. It's a really big yeah. power that you have is you are the creator. You mm -hmm. are the one creating that content to inspire and to do whatever. You know what I mean? Like have, being the creator, we have that ability to choose that story we're trying to tell. And that's that's awesome. I love that. Uh, we get to make and, those cheesy pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa, I just want to say from like experience, I've been following you for... I don't know, like eight or nine years now, uh, watching oh my videos gosh. and looking that at your Instagram content and and all that stuff. I got your book. I got this book and then I got the audio book. Now listen to the audio ah, book. That's awesome. Um, and I got to say, like, you're super positive. You have a really nice and caring, loving vibe to your channel. And whenever I watch your videos or see some of your content rolled by, it, it always cheers me up, makes me laugh, that kind of thing. Like, in particular, I do want to talk about this book because this is something that when I was going through the pandemic, um, and early 2020, because 2020 was a bit of a rough start to the year for me, this book like really helped me get through some, you know, internal crises that I was dealing with, struggling with, you know, getting older, approaching 30, and like everything about this book, it just like, it, it made me laugh. I felt so related to it. And uh, I know that there are tons of people out there that follow you and continue to follow you that uh, have that same kind of experience with you because of what you've put out 
Um, so I want to say thank you for that. Oh man, I'm going to start crying. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's, that's really beautiful and uh, rewarding on so many levels. So it's an honor to, uh, it, to make a difference. Uh, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard because you like do this behind a screen been doing this like by myself like you know like at home like it's such a weird thing and so when you get to meet people in real life that are actually like affected by what you do yeah. not only is it just like so rewarding but it's another reminder of like oh yeah keep going and keep putting out what you hope the world can like have and get and so if, if that like gave you a little like gem of hope or or feeling like you're not alone like oh my gosh that that's a gift in itself for me. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, did you want to talk a little bit about your book? Oh, sure. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh man, I was asked to write a book like far before that book came out and I just didn't have anything to say. It was like a time when like YouTubers were all making books. It was like the thing to do. Um, and people were, I just like did not have, a point of view like at that point like I just didn't I could have done it but I didn't want to fake it going back to what you were talking about Ryan so I waited I like said no I'm not ready and then finally like in my 30s I started accumulating insane stories because all my friends were getting married and having kids and I felt like I was in this like weird like in between space that no one was talking about <laughs> and it was like kind of mind-boggling to me that no one was talking about it and so that's when I was like oh I'm ready and so I started to go out and try to pitch this idea for this book and the the term 30 life crisis popped into my head and I was like I got something here and so um, I was just so happy to be able to write down all those stories and they're comedic but some of them were like super dark and kind of like kind of sad like my life you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe the book then? Is it more of like a, a biography? Is it more or autobiography or more just quick short stories throughout your life? A little what bit of both. Yeah. yeah. It's about like short comedic stories about things that happen in your thirties that no one like warned you about. So it's like a chicken soup for the soul, but like a demented version. My version. The Seinfeld esque version of it. Um and yeah, I'm so proud of it. And uh, uh, it was like so cathartic and like hearing these stories of people that can relate to it and makes them feel a little <sighs> left alone is super fun. So. Yeah, actually like uh, reading it, you had so many quotes from Seinfeld, like yeah. at the beginning of each chapter, there was like a Seinfeld quote basically. And uh, I had never watched the show from beginning to end. And after I read the book, then that was something that was one of the goals of mine. Um, Have you started? Oh, yeah, I watched it all. I watched it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 is so thrilled in the matter of about 10 I seconds. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, so for me, like, Seinfeld was one of those shows that was, like, on. It was kind of on, and my mom and dad would watch it, and I would kind of watch it from here to there. But I never watched it all the way consistently from beginning to end kind of thing. And I knew of it, and I knew quite a few of the famous episodes, um, but hadn't pieced the entire story together. Um, and uh, yeah, you're wow, so many good episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to do Curb. Have you done Curb yet? No. Curb your enthusiasm. No, no Curb your yeah. enthusiasm. Great. <laughs> the latest season is the greatest. You might want to start on that. Um, that's awesome. If anything, I gave you the gift of Seinfeld. What an honor. <laughs> I, I had a friend introduce me to Seinfeld in, in sort of an odd way. Um, he was my tattoo artist. And when you, when I'd go to his shop for like a five hour session, he'd have like a season of Seinfeld oh my God, yes. playing, right? So you're, you're getting tattooed and you're trying not to laugh, right? And, <laughs> he's laughing. You're like, are you making straight lines back there? Yeah. How do your tattoos look? <laughs> yeah. That, actually, you they look Jerry great. on your back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's Jerry? No. <laughs> <laughs> told me it was Jacques Cousteau. That's oh, honestly a really great story. If ever you get to meet like Seinfeld yeah. or anyone in the camp, yeah. you have to tell them that. Well, I, I I'd probably talk his ear off about cars, if anything. But uh, oh my but, god, yeah. how great is that series? I know, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but it's uh, it's interesting the the different things that influence you. I, and now I, I I might have to get that book because I'm just creeping up to my 30s now. Oh, and you look. I, I look great. old for my age. I know, right? Great. <laughs> oh, <there's laughs> fake content. 
fake right? content right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't want any part of this. I don't want any part of this. All right. I should have died. Ryan, 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 a book like that when I was in my 20s might have been might have been good because there was so much that and I haven't read the book, but there are so many things as you're talking about. It, I'm thinking, oh, my God, like little things that people never told you about, you know, even stupid things well, not stupid things, but buying a house or when all of your friends start getting married and the pressures of, uh, you know, all of your friends are having kids like one. I love the title. One drunk baby shower at a time. Like. I can't even tell you how many times I picked my wife up from a baby shower and she's just dickered because you know, <laughs> she's, she's like, ah, oh, there was uh, stuff and it was all baby. Like baby. I play, and, and, and I'm like, all right, what's you? She goes, I play with the dog, you know? <laughs> oh my God. I th- that's basically what's in my book. And I think your yeah. wife and I are soulmates. <laughs> yeah. We'd, we'd be at a Christmas party and somebody come in with a new baby and everybody's like, Shh, go to the new baby. And Chris is like, Ooh, a cat, you know? And, uh, <laughs> There's no, Don't there's take no, the baby. There's no uh, children in this house, just fur babies. So, <laughs> yes. oh well, that's interesting because um, my husband and I are like we got late, we got married last year in November. Okay. Uh, Congratulations! So, thank yeah, you. We're both yeah. 39 now, so we are like a little late bloomers, or we just do things our own way. But it's interesting. We're now in the process of being like, are we ready to have kids? Do we want to have kids? Like. And so we want to talk to couples who made the conscious decision not to have kids uh, to really, oh my God, I might have to interview you guys if you don't mind, because I think there's some, again, going back to that, we're talking about Mark with the power in a decision is interesting to me. And right now we're in limbo and that's a very uncomfortable place to be, but I love to talk to people who made that decision um consciously and what that looks like and why you made that decision and what and how that's panned out and those again going back to the book full circle is like things that people just like don't really talk about which is why mm-hmm. podcasts are amazing because i feel actually podcasts have opened uh <clears throat> th- yes. these uh conversations that otherwise aren't accessible um mm-hmm. in like the public eye you know um but yeah it's just uh, having these conversations and facilitating places for people to like think a little bit differently or at least hear opinions that aren't aren't the norm our our doctor our family doctor she's uh, retired now but at the time our family doctor said it best she said all of your friends are pushing you to have children they all, everybody wants you to have kids because they had kids and they want you to be miserable too <laughs> and uh, yeah i um yeah, I, I cannot imagine having children at this point in my life. Like, I just yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't have done it. Like, Well, uh, it's crazy, too. Like, I've known you guys for so long, I never put that together. I never pieced together that now that you guys have kids and you're both married, have, you know, are happily married guys. And it just I never put that together until just now. Yeah. So. That's because you're a dude. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> 25 years. I'll be 23 years married this year. And oh uh, wow! Yeah, don't let the light fool you. I'm not very observant up here. That's just for show. <laughs> well, I mean, there's pros and cons to it, and it's ult- it's ultimately up to the individual person. Yeah. Some people need to have kids. Um, mm-hmm. My former manager Lindsay has four children. She wants another one. Who knows? I mean, you just some people have that um, need, right? Which mm-hmm. is great, and there, there's no problem with that. But I'm also the type of person, uh, having come from a relationship, uh, um, my parents basically split when I was very young, and you know, you're when you're raised a certain way, you don't want to have kids that you'll have to raise that way. Or I know you have the choice to do it differently, but you know what? I at my age now, the only benefit I could see to having children is that when I'm really old, they can take care of me, which is mm-hmm. a so it's a super selfish reason to have children. It's like it's a very the worst common reason. reason, though. It's a very common reason. But it's so selfish to do that, I think. I mean, you bring these kids into the world and you raise them up to have these lives, and then all of a sudden they have to stop everything to look after you. Like that doesn't sound like a very I want my kids to grow up and live a life and, and go on and do their thing. You know, I don't want to have to worry about anyway, that's just me. 
That's one. Brian, don't, to, Brian, don't worry. About it. I'll take care of you, okay? When you get older, Brian, yeah. and like the next <laughs> oh, you'll be there years, for me. Finally, old, I'll take care Sweet. of you. Sweet. Okay? Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate <laughs> it. No, I have a list. It's yet another reason list, and and there's probably like four or five hundred reasons on there uh, yeah. to not have children. But that's that's my reasons. It's not yeah. everybody's. I don't judge. Yeah. Oh, well, we're opening up a can of worms here. It sounds like. Perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you asked. Oh, there you go. Yeah. If you if you want a good laugh, though, one of the reasons why I never wanted children is is I don't do poo. I don't. I I, I could not. I'm like, if I change a diaper, I'd be like, Bleh! you know, that'd be it. Oh, really? So, so ironically, this week, twice now, I have changed diapers, except it's not on a human baby. We have a geriatric cat. I was yeah. going to say another news. Mark has also switched to depends. So, no, no. <laughs> oh, it's like, where is this going? She's so cute. Like, she wanders happened? around in her little way to diaper. And, and oh. she, you know, it breaks my heart, though, because I put a new diaper on her this morning. She jettisoned it while she was having breakfast. So I had to put a new diaper on her. And then off she goes. And, and she's in that we have a little side room that the litter pans are in. And I walk by, and she's standing there in, a, in her little Huggies number one size, and she's standing in the litter pan because she thinks she's using it. But oh. the reason she's in the diaper is because she'll also get halfway somewhere and go, oh, this must be a litter pan, and stop and, and do her business. So, oh, bless her little... You know, yeah, she's yeah. I, I'm sorry. I have to break in for a quick second. I could read Aurora's mind right now. I mean, aside from the sad cat thing, which makes her yeah. go all cutie, uh, yeah. she's just thinking, I have Lisa on the show right now, and all we're talking about is, is kitty litter and diapers. Kitty litter. So <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I told you I grew up on Dumb and Dumber. All I want to talk about is farting Generically poo. went that way. Generically <laughs> went that way. So Nothing brings me more joy than a fart joke. I, or a poop well, joke. in that case, the reason I have a candle going right now is because this is also my cat's litter box room. And <laughs> just before the show, she destroyed it. So, yeah, <laughs> in case you see me sweating profusely, that's probably why. Anyway. <laughs> Couldn't love it more. Couldn't love you guys more. You're <laughs> No, this Perfect. has been awesome. Oh, this is it's great. like the end of a bad, bad date. I know, right? We oh, lost right bad. again. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's been great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we're all, we're all going to get text messages later. You guys are a-holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yes, I am. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> All right, so Lisa, you're gonna have to come back, but just you and Aurora for the next time. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> yeah, you'll 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 see Brian. Brian and I'll be here though. But yeah. Oh. Oh, he's doing. Yeah. Okay. Just be muted. That's it. We'll just we be muted. Shtick. We love a shtick. Yeah, this is wonderful. <laughs> I truly had I had no idea what I was in store for, and I really I appreciate your guys's. Um, you're also just like tapped into the mind, body, and spirit, and it's 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 nice. It's nice to it's talk to very. It. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it. It's why, it's why we do this. Um, yes. Aurora and I both well, actually pretty much all of us work retail, and we deal with a lot of. Um, pretty I work retail. I know what that frustrations. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're actually now we are all literally we all, retail. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, uh, we're pretty much, Brian. We all work retail, so uh, yeah, yeah. You can understand why we have to do this just to let out all of our uh, frustrations. Oh <laughs> yeah. just to people, talk are to people are not very creative. nice. People are not nice sometimes. No, yeah. it's true. But that's again why we do this because every single person we've had on our show uh, on Tuesdays. I always say this to people now, Tuesday is my favorite day of the year because I feel great <laughs> having had these conversations on Monday night. I wake up Tuesday with all these new ideas and all these new people I've met. Uh, we've met some incredible people doing this, yourself included. Thank you so much. Really oh, appreciate you, you being here. Also, can I buy a camera from you soon? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll after. be cheaper for you because this is Canada and you know the money's different. So yeah. y'all, I want to come to Canada so bad. I love it there. I, I visited Vancouver and I never wanted to leave. Yeah. yeah. Toronto's Vancouver a little is different. Uh, You're talking <laughs> ish. My family my, my family immigrated from they through Toronto. So oh, Toronto right has a big place of in our family in our hearts. See? So I'll come visit. Well, one if day. you ever come back and visit, we'll definitely have to meet up because yeah. uh, it's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for everything and just for giving a safe space to to converse. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. But we're not done with you yet. Oh, okay. Yet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we're into the danger zone. 
So, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Coming in. Yeah. Okay. so before we get into our last three questions, does yeah. Brian, Mark, or Ryan have anything to ask Lisa? She we... says with trepidation. Um, <laughs> this is when you guys hit me with like really what's your favorite questions. fart joke <laughs> oh fart well okay yeah. I mean it's a poop a poop a scene um, <laughs> in Dumb and Dumber I mean the epic like oh, yeah when he's it. trapped in the bathroom and he just can't stop yep it's just so funny and then <laughs> um, people like I've seen on YouTube where people will time um, the New Year's like ball drop <laughs> 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 all like the edits oh, of that i mean i just like honestly like i just remember going to see uh um uh austin powers and like the who does number two work for and it's yeah. just like so <laughs> funny like i don't know i i, uh, I, think I, I it's funny because the joy that i can see it bring you right now just I how much you get a good part, part joke yeah <laughs> i'm like a, Oh boy, like indefinitely. <laughs> it's, Love it. it's my my soft spot. So thanks for accepting. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I went across the room, going, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a question, and it's a okay. little bit more. Serious, and I'm sorry to, to okay. be a bit of a downer, but um, I was. I've been trying to watch all your videos. I've been trying to learn a little bit more about you and That's figure so out. That's so nice. You know, Thank you. Well, it's important. I think that, uh, you know, if I'm going to talk to somebody, I want to know who you are, right? Um, one of the things I saw that really kind of hit home with me personally was you had an episode where you were going to go out and get some things, but you didn't really want to. You had some anxiety about going out and you ended up not going out to get it. Um, you just That's just kind of, I think, the reality of how we all feel these days. Um, as a YouTuber, I know we have some friends who, who, who do YouTube and they're all traveling all over the world and doing all these uh, crazy things. How crazy is it for you? Um, that's not the question. The question is, have you been able to reprogram your mind to get back out and start doing these things? Have you been able to uh, accept going out to actually have to do the stuff that you have to do? Cause it's not easy and I'm not there yet. I know I'm just not there yet. Yeah. Uh, I've turned down a, a teaching job at McMichael Art Gallery um, because I wasn't quite ready to hang out with a bunch of kids teaching them photography yet, um, even though it's outside. I should be fine with it. I love working with McMichael, but my brain is just saying no. So that's a real thing. And I, I'm, I'm wondering, do you deal with that level or like, how do you deal with it? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a very like honest question. Uh question to ask and like I commend you for even saying that like out loud and like then bringing it up it's hard but again these are those things the reason why we do this right is to like make people feel like they're not alone because I feel like we're all going through this in different ways and watching my friends all go through this too everyone has different levels of comfort um before the pandemic I I had a tendency to have a little bit of agoraphobia because not really agoraphobia, but I have social anxiety where I'm in public and I have difficult, I can talk to people. That's not really my thing. I just like, um, I'm uncomfortable in like big pub, bustling public spaces. Mm -hmm. That's a deep, dark conversation. We talk about another, another time where that came from. And, you know, I've worked in therapy to like work through that. And like, I'm not really that comfortable in the car. It's all this like control, right? Mm -hmm. It's all like this, like feeling out of control. So you have now the added element of the pandemic. Lucky for me, I have a husband who's very smart. Like uh, sometimes like I have no idea what he's talking about. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's like on a whole nother like intellectual level. Um, and you know, that's a blessing and a curse for him in his own ways. But he has been such an integral part of my journey um, because he can really like um, break down, like with the pan pandemic, he's kept me really sane where I think otherwise I would have had like hypochondria to like the umph degree, but he was really able to kind of talk me through statistics and like keep things very like, you know, um, pragmatic. And so I think that's helped me in my journey of being able to leave the house and feel comfortable, like he's kind of knocked that into me. And reversely, yeah. my mother is like a super hippie who's like, I mean, I don't think my mom's like worn a mask more than twice, if I'm being quite honest. Not that she doesn't want to take care of other people. She's just like, 
it'll be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I think I'm around such extreme people that like are able to sort of make me feel a little bit better. So for me, I've felt a little like looser about it. We also got COVID. Um, and so there's some, it sucked and we're boosted. We did the whole thing. It sucked at the time, but there is a little bit of like weight off our shoulders at the moment. So we're able to uh, feel a little bit freer in that sense. But yeah, no, I, I know the struggle just sub without the pandemic. The struggle of leaving the house is real, man. It is yeah. real because there, once you leave, the world is crazy. Uh, and you, you don't have the control. You do not have the control. And yep. uh, I'm actively working on that uh, right now, like I said, about the car I'm not good in the car and it's, it's gotten bad to the point where I don't want to go places. So. Wow. Well, I hope you are good with the lack of control soon. <laughs> I don't know what's as, as How do you, you get over that? Are you, you know what? I think you're going to feel so good when you start teaching again. I used to teach and I just think, wow, what a get, like you'll do it. You'll rip the bandaid and then you'll be like, Oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. See, this is a bit of a problem though, because I can do it online. Well, right. They're making it very easy for us now. Right. Exactly. The yeah. last time I did the McMichael thing, it was online. So uh, thanks, pandemic. So, but I know guess, if we were all in a room together right now, like this has been really fun. Like I've genuinely so enjoyed. But if we were all in a room right now, how much even more fun would it be? I know, but I'm, pre I'm prepared. I have the mask. If we're in a room. I'm good. I'm good. It there's is always, weird. I felt like putting a mask on the first time. There's always a few in the pocket. <laughs> I know we're so conditioned, but we'll but by the eighth wave, we're all going to have to wear masks during this. That'll yeah. be the conditions. It's like, hey, you know <laughs> what? Social distance and wear masks even on video. I mean, there's yeah, that's all it. you can do. You can oh you protect the chat. I didn't want to come. I was afraid of a computer virus. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that's but very no. 1999 of you. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, the year I got married. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> oh man. My 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 last question is: Where can people buy your book? Oh, thank you. Um, I believe it's still available. You know what? If you go to if you go to thirtycrisisbook dot com, you can uh, get all the information information on it. But it's available on Amazon. It was in Barnes and Nobles for a while there. So just Google Thirty Life Crisis Book. Um, and it's available. Thank you. For people use the Google. Me. People use the Google. It's there. Yeah, use the Google. It was a thirty life crisis. Thirty life crisis. If you didn't catch that, yeah. Thirty <laughs> life crisis. Yeah. Promises to be a good one. So there you go. And Aurora says it is. So wait, Aurora says it is. <laughs> Guys, I'm entering to my forties soon, so I'm sure I'll have another book soon. Gosh, <laughs> uh, another crisis and another book. I should have five books by now. If that was the okay. If you write a book in your forties, please call it Go Forty. It's your birthday. I don't that want no bomb. part of it because as long as you use it, that's I'm good enough with that. <laughs> so fun. I love that. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Um, I have one last question to you, Lisa, um, before we move into our last three. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to uh, young or aspiring content creators? Oh, that's great. I love, I love this question. Cause I get this a lot. Uh, do stuff for you and not for everyone else. Like do, if you're going to do this one, you got to be consistent. Like consistency mm -hmm. is key. Um, but two, don't do something trying it back because you're trying to chase a trend or because you think you're supposed to do it do something that's authentically joyful for you. Like live in your joy, create in your joy, um, and the rest will find its place. And sometimes I lose sight of that, but when I come back to that, that's when I'm the happiest. And I also think that's when I'm the most successful. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you. And don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that should be on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> find your joy and don't be a dick. Yeah. Exactly. I've seen teachers that just say, don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah. I'd find your joy. That's got to yeah. be <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, so at the end of each episode, we ask three questions to our guests. Um, the first one is, what's your jam? What's that favorite song that you always go to? You never turn off. You never hit skip. 
um, that gets you kind of pumped up and excited and, you know, anything in general? What is that song? She's already getting hyped up thinking about it. I, I know. I'm like, I oh. I'm so bad with music. If my husband was here, he'd be laughing at me because, like, I listen to, like, the oldest stuff ever. Like, I am not up to speed. Like, I have... I'm so lame. <laughs> like I was like the same Spotify playlist, which is like a Stevie Wonder like radio mix. <laughs> so any Stevie Wonder, any Michael Jackson, any Madonna, like anything that I you have on vinyl, any Beatles. Like when I got married, we listened to like a Beatles playlist. Like that was it. And I was like, oh wow, I'm like an old. I'm an old lady. There it is. Exactly. There you are. Speaking, soul, you know anything speaking of vinyl um i seem to remember watching like the video after you got married about the, the was it like the phone calls or something like that and it was pressed oh yeah this was so cool this company um sends you this old telephone like an old school like telephone and you put it out, we put it out at our wedding and everyone would come up and instead of doing like a sign in book or a video like wish, people would pick up the phone and left messages for us. And then the company sends you it. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name off the top of my head. I'll send it to you if you guys have description links to give them credit. Um, but uh, then they send you like a, like a, you know, like an MP3 of it and you can have it pressed also into a vinyl. So that forever you can listen to the friends and family. That's cool. That's awesome. So yeah, cool. that's actually super cool. Yeah. It's the greatest. It was this like couple that got married and came up with this idea and like now have this great business. It was it was cool. We haven't listened to ours yet. We'll wait for our anniversary. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Okay. Um next question is what is your tool of the trade? Um, so this could be anything really, it could be an object. It, like an actual physical item that you rely on to create uh, but it could also be like a concept a state of mind something that's not actually physical so what's your tool of the trade well if you saw my actual physical tools you would be horrified for me because <laughs> <laughs> my computer is very old my uh camera like i mentioned is held together with duct tape at this point in time <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and my tripod is a mess. So let's not talk about that. You've offended the three <laughs> photographers in our group. I know. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's expensive. Um, yeah. <laughs> now Mark's walking Now we walk walking oh, oh, Ryan. Ryan. It's um, okay. I understand. No, no, no. I, she said duct tape, and, and I, I started laughing because <laughs> duct tape. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. maybe duct tape. Duct tape is our key to success. Yeah, duct tape. See, yes. and this is, this is Sir William, and he's duct taped <laughs> together. <laughs> but you're doing it all right, Lisa. You're doing it all right. You're doing yeah. You're right it's, it. You, it's well used. <laughs> yeah. That's hysterical. Right. I'm not going to drop the mic because there's no duct tape on that. <laughs> I did drop the mic and there's duct tape around it. Um, so I guess it's just like authenticity, I guess. Like it's just really like trying to be as authentic as possible. Like um, even if it's unflattering at times. Some of my favorite TV shows, like I don't know if you guys watch Better Things, but – um, this, uh, vulnerability and authenticity, I think is where it's at because that's what we need and that's what connects humans. And like, I think that's where my favorite friendships and, uh, relationships come from and how they thrive. And so I try to bring that into my work as much as humanly possible. Sometimes it backfires, but we do our best. But you do it authentically. Yeah. That's perfect. Love it. And awesome. fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> authentic fart jokes. Yep. They gotta be authentic fart jokes. They're yeah. not authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be those things on your phone that just yeah, make yeah. the sounds. No, gotta be authentic. Awesome, awesome. And the last question, Lisa, you already know, is we ask our guests on the show to issue a challenge to our listeners and our viewers. So, what is the challenge? Uh, that you yeah, the challenge, which actually, like, really I learned during pandemic was to go for a walk. I have a dog, so we walk the dog often. But the power of the walk, y'all, like, 
just to <laughs> one, get outside, get some like sun, uh, get some vitamin D um, is so helpful and healing. But it also like put, I make a conscious effort to not look at my phone to, I bring my phone for safety reasons, but like um, to just like take the moment to decompress, take what's in around you and let your mind just kind of go. And I've had some of my best ideas on walks when you felt like a writer's block or trying to work through something, even like with my husband, like if we just need to think something out, I'm like, let's just take a walk. We take a walk and like the ideas come, there's something, I think there's like an actual like physical, right? Like there's like some science behind like when you walk, you're it's able serotonin. to. Like, so I was going to say, yeah, I, think, I, was like, I know, I know there's a word for it, but I couldn't come up with it. Yeah. I, I think that's what it is. I'm, I'm going to go with it. Well, that's the, <laughs> the happy oh, one. Strength in numbers here. Strength in numbers, Brian. Let's all just jump on it. We'll agree. It's Three men in the same studio are right. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's some like freeing aspect where you're like physically moving, which gets your mind moving. And, and um, yeah, so I, I urge people, the challenge would be, uh, to take a walk without looking at your phone, without listening to anything, uh, just thinking and absorbing and see what comes up for you. If you can do it like even just five minutes once a week or once a day for a week, come back and write down everything you think of. It's like doing dreams where you like write down your dreams. Same idea. What, what comes up for you? Even if it makes no sense, just write it down. Even if just a word, a title. Sometimes I have a journal with it just says titles, 30 life crisis is in it like years ago. Uh, write it, just write it down and then walk away. Don't edit yourself. Um, that's my challenge because I think some great things can come from that. Love it. Love that. Awesome. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, before we end, uh, where can people follow you, uh, subscribe to you? Um, you know, watch your videos, get your book. I guess we already covered the, the get your book part, but. <laughs> no, well, keep hyping it up. Yeah. Keep hyping that book up. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like my mom. My mom's so good at it. Um, <laughs> I'm on Instagram. Uh, I, uh, oh, I just had to think about who I was on Instagram. Lisa Schwartz. Um, but you can find me on YouTube. It's Leasebug, L-I-S-B-U-G. It was my AOL like or AIM name. And ever since I've been stuck with it. So be careful what you choose when you're like nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leasebug, L-I-S-B-U-G. Uh, and uh, your designs for interior design. Because we didn't talk oh, about yeah. that a whole lot. We didn't talk about that. Guys, I have a lot of hobbies. And I start a lot of things and don't finish it. That's a conversation for another day. <laughs> we'll get you on again. We'll get you on again. Yeah, we'll hey, talk about it another I'll, time. I'll another time. And we'll do something about this. <laughs> no, I love, see, I love that. That's the best. Yeah. I think that's yeah. cool. As long as it reflects you and what you got going on today. There you go. Actually, on that point, I should point out something that I have behind me, if I can, just take a second. Uh -oh. This yeah. camera right here, I've named the Schwartz. Uh, you know, space I, balls. I'd, like to give you, I'd like to give you credit for it, but uh, the Schwartz is the space balls. Exactly. Exactly. A Mel Brooks fan to the bone. I mean, yep, yep, yep. There's a lot of more in the cancel culture. So she talk didn't even hesitate. <laughs> I know. Talk about a fart joke, though. Right? Right? <laughs> right? So yeah. you and I, we're, we're in sync. So this, <laughs> this, this is, he's saying, take the challenge now. We need to go for a walk. Oh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> That's a good poochie. Right? That's a great poochie. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, you well, guys. What a joy. I hope that we could do this with drinks in hand together one day. Yeah. Thank Perfect. you. Thank That'd you so much. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep All my right. drinking hand until then. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, I knew I liked you, Ryan. I knew I liked you. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, thanks. thanks so much for listening. And uh, thanks so much for being on, Lisa. It's been an uh, absolute pleasure. Um, and yeah, uh, if you guys like our podcast, um, follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted. Thanks so much. Go follow all the platforms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye, everyone. Ooh, ooh, ooh.